For Crema Media's quality, I'm Sane Jameni. Joining me today is the BUSA CEO, Casco Vadia, to discuss the recent State Capture Commission report. In your assessment, why has the National Prosecuting Authority been so slow in prosecuting those who are implicated in state capture? All I know is that they have publicly said before that they have resource and capacity constraints. And I assume that's one of the reasons why uh, they haven't moved swiftly on prosecutions. Uh, I think also uh, Shamila Batoi has publicly said that while she appreciates people's anxiety for them to move quickly, that she's absolutely clear that particularly for some of the bigger cases, before she goes to court, she wants to make sure that she has a tight case and she builds a tight case. So so I guess that's the way they work. Publicly, we know that there are capacity and resource constraints, and that's why we made the offer we made. Your organization is offering uh, assistance uh, to the NPA. What role can organized business play in strengthening the NPA? Uh, all we can do is make, it, make an offer that we would re- mobilize resources and capacity that needs to be put at the disposal of the National Prosecuting Authority. It's not our ambit to advise her on what the priority cases are, how she should prioritize her work or anything. That's her her job and, and she must do that. We want to keep an arm's length approach towards this. So we would mobilize the resources. We would want to discuss with her how best to structure it so that we are not seen to be trying to influence her in any way. We are not impinging on the independence in any way neither of which we want to do. It's a discussion we will have with her very soon, and we will take guidance and direction from her on that. Can you also explain to us what kind of resources is BUSA offering the NPA? Well, again, it's something that we'll discuss with her. You know, it's not for us to even say what sort of resources she needs, what sort of capacity she needs. That's something she must advise us on. And depending on, one, whether she wants to accept Uh, resources and capacity from the private sector. Two, if she does, then she's happy with the way we structure it so that nobody can in any way claim that we've influenced her or we've impinged on her independence. And then if she then says, look, I need you to source some private prosecutors or, or I need money for some private prosecutors, then that's what we do. If she says, I need Uh, to sort out systems in my offices and can you help with that? That's what we do. I think that that's all got to be driven by the National Prosecuting Authority because the moment we start saying that, no, this is what you should do or or this is the help we're going to provide us, so we, we then actually impinging on her independence and we don't want to do that. And if I may ask, was this a unanimous decision from all your members? Well, it was a decision taken by the BUSA board, which is authorized to do so. In the press statement I issued, uh, all our members have the press statement and are aware of it. Uh, so, so it's a decision by the BUSA board and, and they have the mandate to take such a decision. And so it could have the endorsement of the members. And has the Zondo Commission, uh, according to BUSA, done a good job? What do you think the commission achieved so far? So looking at the... At the first part of the report, uh, it certainly appears that they've done a thorough job. I think the report is very thorough with a very good account of the interaction with witnesses and others, uh, very clear recommendations and who should carry out those recommendations. Uh, so, so it appears they've done a thorough job. Uh, they've been at it for about 42 months. Uh, so it's been a long time, but it's been it's been a massive exercise. And I think that that the success of the work they've done, the success of the report now depends on you know government and the country essentially. Uh, and that's why we said that we accept all the recommendations he has made. That's why we say that uh, uh, we need to move with speed to implement those recommendations, not just the prosecutions investigation and prosecution, but even other recommendations related to procurement and so on. And we've indicated that we are happy to work with government and other social partners to do businesses, but 
in implementing those recommendations. The acting Chief Justice has done his work, uh, his commission has done their work. Uh, the second part of the report and the third part of the report will be presented to the President in the next month and, and a bit. Uh, and, and it's now up to us and we need to ensure that government in particular moves swiftly to in, implement those recommendations. And how are you engaging with uh, the members of the business community who are implicated in this first Zondo Commission report? BUSA members are not corporates. So the members, uh, businesses mentioned in that report are not members of BUSA. But they are members of business associations that belong to us. And, and at the board meeting, what we did is we asked those b- business organizations to meet with those corporates, to put to them what the commission is saying, to hear what they're saying and what they're going to do about it and so on, and then to come back to the BUSA board fairly quickly to inform us on what the views are. And then we'll, from a more informed position and more information available, we will take a view on, and our view on different particular corporates might be different to others. Now, it's also in the public domain that uh, your board meeting discussed the issue of protecting whistleblowers. Can you tell us about that? Well, again, it's one of the recommendations that the Commission makes. And, and again, we, we'd like to see what sort of role we can play in that. But what we did say is that we will approach our members to see, firstly, we'll try to make contact with whistleblowers and so on to understand what the situation is. We will then speak to our members to see if there's possibility. So if whistleblowers have lost employment, we'll speak to our members to explore the possibilities of uh, offering them employment if such is available and so on. Because I think that's probably the best role uh, business can play. Uh, But we'll again engage and we'll engage with the relevant stakeholders to see how best we implement the recommendation that the Commission has made regarding whistleblowers. But we think it is an important area that needs to be addressed. And lastly, Mr. Kovadia, our President Cyril Ramaphosa has asserted the need for South Africans to protect the rule of law and the Constitution. How does then Busa view the current context and the strength of those forces trying to subvert the rule of law in our country? Well, we agree with the president. We must protect the rule of law and we must protect our constitution. We are a constitutional democracy. Uh, we believe that the constitution does not stop us from actually addressing the many challenges we have in our country and we must protect that constitution. Uh, I think that, that uh, you know, anybody who uh, threatens that, who... who I mean, you can criticize, you can criticize, but if you want to criticize, do so. As the acting chief justice himself said in the his press conference, do so with evidence and do so with, with information. Don't pass slurs on the judiciary, on the constitution and so on. And, and I think that, that particularly uh, people in government, people in parliament who have taken an oath of office, who have taken an oath to protect the constitution must do so. We absolutely clear uh, that that we do need to protect our constitution. We do need to uh, utilize our constitution to address uh, uh, the, the myriad of problems we have in the country, and and where people act in a way that they are breaking the law in denigrating the constitution and breaking and not following conscripts of law and order, then then action must be taken against them. And, and the best way to protect our law and order, to the best way to show that we are a country that believes in law and order and believes in the constitution is to apply that. And where people have broken the law, irrespective of who they are, they must be acted against. There was Casco Vadia, CEO of BUSA, in conversation with Quality about the State Capture Commission reports.